stimulate further growth. To that end, the consortium aptly named Game Changers has secured almost 13 million rand from the National Treasury's Jobs Fund Initiative. For a detailed chat on the state of the country's gaming sector, we're joined this afternoon by Zaid Motala from the Treasury's Jobs Fund, also Sasha Lee Webster Morari, a designer at Glitch Portal, and gaming industry researcher Alexandra Patterson uh, joins the conversation virtually. A very good afternoon to you all. Great to have you with us on today. Beautiful way, I say, to be spending a Sunday uh, afternoon. And, and maybe let me start with you, um, Zaid. When we're looking at this, these numbers, it's actually 12.9 million rand yes. that has been set aside by Treasury for the Afri Games Consortium. Indeed. What exactly is the Afri Games Consortium? Okay, so the Afri Games Consortium is essentially a grouping of key players in the industry. And what they've realized is that they need support to actually grow the South African gaming industry. So the Jobs Fund was established to pilot, test and scale innovative models that do exactly that. So it turned out to be a wonderful collaboration. 12.9 million rand. We do know that gaming and you know technology tends to be quite expensive to develop. How does this scale? Is this enough? Well, I think that where we are in the lifespan of the gaming industry here in South Africa, we find ourselves in a very nascent stage. So what we are trying to do at the moment is do two things to solve for the problem. The problem is a lack of awareness, number one, and an enabling ecosystem for persons in that space to actually tap in to there being a global market. So I don't believe that we are really ready to go at that level if we don't fix things or build things down here first. And that's why this, together with the funding that comes from the Africans Consortium, acts as a nice bins or rather, shall I say, baseline for us to build on. So really, we're at a very foundational stage uh, at the moment. And maybe let me bring you in, um, at Alexandra. You are a gaming industry analyst and, and, and researcher. Could you highlight for us some of the uh, key drivers of growth in the gaming industry in South Africa? Um, well, thank you so much for having us today, firstly. So I think it's a very, very, it's a really good question, but it definitely depends on the, the nature of the business to where the drivers are. Um, and there's definitely an increased desire to see other stories that are coming from South Africa that are coming from new experiences in Africa and Africa where we have an opportunity to do that as an emerging market. So I would say that the stories are definitely a key driver for growth within a specific industry. And to be honest with you, we have some amazing creators and programmers who have really great technical skills, um, which allow us to really make such good games um, that are wanted by the global market. Um, another key driver that we can definitely look at is our work for higher opportunities as well within this industry. We have um, a, a geographic linkage to Europe. Um, being in the same time zone and our, you know, our, our, we come at really great prices when it comes to looking at like the euro or the dollar for work for hire. Um, and we have great services. So I would say that those are two of, uh, of the key drivers at the moment within this specific industry. Quite interesting. I mean, when you mentioned the uh, consumers and the end user, you, you spoke about an international market. Are South Africans consuming gaming as well, or is it largely still production for export? Uh, we do have some amazing studios that have done some incredible work that has been highlighted internationally, won awards internationally. A really great example of a South African studio that has done this is Free Lives, um, with multiple um, published games that have done excellent work internationally. Um, they've also uh, created a, a, a game as well that's provided a lot of uh, uh, cash into actually uh, the Nature Conservancy as well. So it's an amazing opportunity to actually even provide back into various opportunities in South Africa. Um, so I think the global market and sometimes even South Africans don't realize the opportunities within this industry. Um, they don't understand that this, yes, it might be a two-year or three-year life cycle, but the the investment that comes with that is it's a huge turnaround and a huge opportunity. So I think people don't always realize it. We're, we're definitely an emerging market and 
we, we, we hope as Africa Games, if you have one of the events sort of this to really highlight and expose people to, to that market as well. And, and, and Sasha Lee, you are a gamer, a gaming developer, uh, the, the, the creative and very much of the technical part of it. What would you highlight as, as perhaps what is coming out of South Africa right now? I think Alexandra spoke about productions for export. And as somebody who's actually in the industry as well, creating and actually putting this content together, what are the trends? What is the buzz in the local market? I think a lot of us smaller independent studios are really pushing for that representation to really push for the stories that are coming out of South Africa rather than just drawing from the, the mechanics from North America and Europe and then just slapping an African theme on it. So I think we've really seen the value in our daily lives. So everything from cultural folklore to just daily life and how we live here and using that as what we push in our themes and how we get these games out there. And can you cite perhaps some success stories um, of those type of stories and those type of themes actually having seen the light of day and having been enjoyed? I would definitely highlight Pineapple and Studios' uh, Bry Guy, uh, really bringing forward that uh, Bry culture that we have here in South Africa. So playing as a Bry master and um, defeating enemies in order to protect, um, you know, your your food and uh, you know really get that. So yeah, I think that's been um, really great, and I think it's something that the audiences has really enjoyed. And, and, and I wonder from a financing um, and development perspective, say, uh, I mean, where, where do you come in as far as sourcing the talents? Where do you find the younger Sasha Lees um, that you're going to be then booming and initiating into this world of gaming? Especially because Sasha Lee spoke about representation being so key. It's an excellent question. So I think it goes back to my earlier point about developing that ecosystem of support. So what we know about South Africa is that we have the talent, we have world-class players, and they're right here. The question is, how do we funnel them in? So our partners, the Africans Consortium, actually has a series of developmental wings, you know, and that's where young people come into it. But what we've identified as a major gap or obstacle to that is awareness. Let me give you an example. If I had an idea today, who do I talk to? Where do I go? I mean, I mean, uh, the Brahma game is amazing. So imagine if there was Kari Konanjan, you know? Love that. Uh, well, thank you, Captain <laughs> Kenny. <Kendi. laughs> so is imagine. Is it included in the next kind of summies? You know, we're going to work. Yes. And we're going to <laughs> blending. But, but this is the thing. Where does someone take that idea? How do you identify a Sasha Lee who's going to help you to build that? How do you find someone who's going to get developed for you, who's going to, you know, market it for you? And that's really what we're doing here. So in this program, right, it's really about creating that support structure, that support ecosystem. So given that we are nascent now, we can tap into that global market and that's how it works. And, and, and I wonder from your perspective, um, Alexandra, what has been the success rate of South African and even African, um, you know, developers and creators actually exporting their work, but also at the same time developing their talent locally and developing the industry locally as well? Oh, it's an excellent question. Um, there's definitely two sides to that um, as an answer as well. I think we do have really great studios that have definitely exported some amazing games. Um, there are more independent studios, so indie studios have almost self-published their games. Free Knives is again an example. QCF is an example, is another studio that's done this, and The Brotherhood. Um, and a Jobik based studio as well, Nyamakup. Um, so they're their games that they have under their portfolios have done exceptionally well internationally, locally, and throughout Africa. Um, and, and they are definitely studios, I think, like someone like Sasha Lee would look up to and say, these are guys that we want to be one day. You know, as Gitch Portal, this is who we want to be. Um, and then we do have, uh, on the other side, you know, a limited opportunity to create jobs within this industry due to the funding models that are available. So how do studios like, uh, like the ones that I just mentioned um, create jobs. It's, it is a little bit tricky because obviously you need to be able to provide, um, you know, a, a salary that is livable, that is, that is great and can work within this industry. Um, so that's also why this, um, Afri Games Consortium is amazing at the moment. And, and, you know, the, the jobs funders come in and really assisted us in helping 
create these jobs. We, we do need these funding models in order to do that. Um, like I said, it's a two to three year life cycle as well. And uh, the, the, the issue that we do have when it comes to, to local publishing of games, uh, we don't have any publishers on the continent. So we do have to look at international publishers. They obviously then take equity in your business and don't necessarily assist with the funding. So it can be a little bit tricky on that side. So, you know, obviously with the job sign coming in, it does help us quite a lot. And, and we're going to talk about that in a moment, um, you know, Zaid. But before we do, um, Sasha, I, I want to talk to you about, about something that Alexandra uh, mentioned here. What is the link between animation and, and gaming? Uh, because there's a, a, a lot of talk around animation. I mean, there, there's just been a, a various number of, of activations and, and, and the usual Comic Cons that have, that have taken place. And, and there's a, a great synergy in, in those two. What is it? How yes, do you find definitely. Um, so they're definitely not separate. They um, come together really well. So you need animators in order to have those seamless visuals in your game. So whether you're doing 2D or 3D animation, you're going to need someone who specializes in animation to make sure that things like movement, things like um, displays that come on, your pop-ups, uh, animations, your visual effects, you really need those. Um, someone who specializes in that kind of stuff to make sure that the player is immersed in the game and that they're not just seeing squares and blocks and circles moving around. So it really brings together the whole feel of the game and the aesthetic of the game. And, and really, um, the fact that it is a narrative, ultimately, right, even when you're, you're playing a game, there's a story that has to get you emotionally engaged as, as the player. Now, at which point of the process does that actually happen? Um, or is it the technology? that comes before the narrative, or is it the narrative that drives the development of the technology? It's usually the narrative that comes first. So you really need to work on your story. You really need to know where you want to take your player. So a lot of time goes into developing these stories and how the player is going to navigate. And game design actually brings that to another level because you're not just telling a story where the player is going to sit back and watch it like a movie. They need to be interacting and engaging with the game itself. So you really need to lock down on the story before you even get started on the visuals because the story informs the visuals. Once you know the look and feel of the story, then you know exactly what the game is going to look like. And, and I could hear you feel you wanting to come in yeah. then. Yeah. Thank you so much. So uh, I want to add on to what Sasha Lee is saying the nexus between the different elements of game development. That's really what we need to work on here. Because if you think about it, it's an entire value chain. So you need somebody who is a creator, who will do the storyboarding process, who will develop the narrative for you. When that's done, you're going to need the graphic artists who are going to design your characters, who are going to build the worlds and everything that you're in. You're going to need someone who's going to do the music score. You're going to need someone who's going to do the programming. So what we are suggesting, and like Alexandra quite correctly pointed out, the support that is required is to find a way of creating a baseline where everyone that we already have here, how do we bring them into this ecosystem and say, right, we're going to give you training, we're going to give you support, we're going to incubate you, we are going to give you financial and technical support, we're going to give you access to market. All of these things is what's going to help South Africa tap in to the global market. The huge sense, challenge, as Alexandra pointed out as well. challenge, for sure, definitely. I'd like to just comment on that as well. Um, you know, I think also people have this perception that the games industry is just for developers and co-creators and mm. uh, music musicians as well, of course, but then it actually even goes beyond that in the sense that as a studio, you need HR, you need lawyers, you need copywriters, you need people that are specialists within this specific field. And I think... Um, you know, sometimes there's this sort of fear when, uh, you know, you go up to your parents and you say, oh, I want to be a game developer, I want to be in the gaming industry. And everyone sort of says, no, 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 you need to be a doctor, you need to be a lawyer. Well, I actually can be a lawyer within the games industry. So this is also what we're trying to develop with the consortium as well, is to also say, you know, this, there isn't necessarily this block of this is what you have to be within the industry. If you're interested in the industry, there's so many other opportunities you can also tap into. 
there's room for everybody so i guess that's a bit of a footnote for parents there yep. who are always telling their younger to <laughs> get off those <laughs> games <laughs> uh, so they can still stay on their games and become lawyers and you know hr consultants and they end up actually working in an industry that they love and, and appreciate but i want to pick up on a challenge that you brought up a bit earlier on alexander and i'd like to pose that question to you yeah, yeah. say she mentioned that there are no publishers on the african continent and the fact that they then will obviously take ip and equity within the project in order to to to, to publish and, and and distribute clearly that's a huge blind spot mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because that's the distribution now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I agree. So so this is this is really the interesting. And it goes back to your earlier question to Alice. Which one comes first? So do you need the yeah. graphics before you have the story or the other? And similar thing here. So in as much as we have wonderful creators and developers here in South Africa, the access to market through that the publishers that's that's a blockage. So it is only by fostering and creating this environment where people in they can come into the space that gives us a level ground to play from. Then the next thing, as we continue to have conversations like this, as we continue to create the awareness, not just in the mind of the average consumer, but big corporate as well, that listen, this is, a, like you said, to use your term, a major blind spot. By us in the jobs fund that is investing in the space, but what we are doing now is that we are looking to catalyze that sort of movement. And through these conversations and the conversation Alex and them will be having later this year at uh, the Africa Games Week, what we will start to see is that internationally, they know that we are playing in the space, but more than that, we can see locally that, okay, listen, there's something we need to do. Where do we start? And it's an ongoing conversation. And what is the benefit for the private sector to be involved in, in this? Right. So if I can take you down the yellow brick road here for just one second, right? Did you know that the gaming industry globally is bigger than both the film industry and the music industry combined? That's the type of money we're talking about here, right? So for private, so for, for private sector here in South Africa, many of them don't realize, okay, listen, not only do we have our local stories that we need to tell, but our local creators are creating on that level. In fact, in fact, there are stats that we've seen where local creators create, they develop, they do all of that magic, and then ultimately they have to sell overseas mm. because we don't have the support structures here. So if, if you were out there to join the Africa Games Consortium, right, what you'll find is you will become a part of this ecosystem that actually helps us to tap into this. And the possibilities thereafter are endless. Sounds like an open invitation. Can anybody become part? <laughs> Can anybody become part of the Afri um, Africa Games Consortium? Well, what I would invite people out there to do is to actually check them out on socials, right? And uh, what you do is you can reach out, you can see how it works. But also, and if you'll permit me, uh, also check out the Jobs Fund. Look at uh, the amazing projects that we do, not just in this sector, but other uh, potential growth sectors as well. There is so much of magic happening right here in South Africa. And what we need is for South Africans like you and me to start plugging in literally and figuratively to see the potential thereafter. Sasha Lee, I cannot resist. I've got to ask you, what are you working on right now? So we have put out our second prototype. Um, it's called Josie Jam. And Josie Jam is based on the street performers that we see outside at the robots. And you play as a character. Our characters are based on our notes. So they got like our money. So um, some of our characters, the first one named Tiger, um, guides you through it and you direct traffic using your dance moves. So it's rhythm based. It's based on South African music genres. So your guaito, your ama piano. Yeah. What about the issue of music rights though and, and, and usage? I, I'm going to bring the lawyer in here. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go? Um, I'll start by saying that the music is developed in-house. So uh, we collaborate with music, um, music artists who specialize in different genres. And I myself am a sound designer, so I am in charge of getting that music out there, making sure that the music we make is, first of all, authentic to the studio and the overall vibe of the game and then uh, we can look into uh, the the legal the legalities of uh, the music as well that my dear is exactly what this project is about right so the jobs fund initiative here 
is to give support to developers there. So remember I was telling you the example about Bari Conundrum or Kari Conundrum, you know, the ideas growing there. Yeah. Um, where does somebody go? Who do you talk to about that? Imagine if you had this next multi-million dollar idea, multi-million dollar idea, and suddenly there was a space that you could go to where you could get plugged in, you have access to an attorney, you have access to financiers, you have access to this is what it's about. So those are challenges, and these are the kind of conversations that need to happen, and that's why this ecosystem is so important. It's so important. So as, as we wrap up, um, Alexander, could you tell us a bit about Africa Games Week? Um, you are the, the yes. festival organizers. Yes, yes. I'm the event director that sits uh, on Africa Games Week. Africa Games Week is definitely the premier event uh, for African games developers to showcase their work um, and get exposure to an international market. So someone like uh, Gage Portal, who would be potentially coming to the event as well, would have access to international publishers, international marketeers, people that can assist with um, uh, giving real-time advice on their game as well. We also bring in experts and in industry to our event as well, so you get exposure to those experts we also look at ecosystem development at our show as well and showcase as many sort of South African and African game developers at our show. Um, so it's extremely important. And of course, um, the, the consortium that we formed, that's Africa Games, we are a member of that consortium and we are obviously the ones that help people get to market. It's, we're not the only ones helping people get to market, but we try and assist as much as possible. Um, we're very proud to say as well as Africa Games, we, we've been able to sort of bring in about 310 million rand into the African game, dollars, sorry, dollars, um, into the African gaming ecosystem through our event because people get to meet each other here uh, in Cape Town. Um, it's on from the third till the fifth. Uh, sorry, second till the fifth of December in Cape Town. So we hope to see as many people that are interested in the games, the ecosystem, studios that are wanting to meet internationals, and internationals, of course, wanting to meet our developers at our show. So exciting! What a pleasure having all of you here with us today. It really has been just so stimulating, a uh, very engaging uh, industry that really still remains untapped. I wonder how it will look like ten years from now, especially with the likes of, of Sasha Lee uh, in, in the industry. Thank you very much, Zaid Motala from uh, Treasury's Jobs Fund Initiative, Sasha Lee Webster Morare from Glitch Portal, and gaming industry researcher Alexandra Patterson. Well, that's how we come to end of that conversation, but still a whole lot more in store for you on today. Still coming up, 